Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you a very exciting technique called LIME or for local interpretable model agnostic explanation, which is a way for us to interpret machine learning models. And it is very exciting. It is super easy uh, to use. It also has a very powerful visualization. And this is exactly what we're going to do. In this video, we need to get the data set the data set, you'll be able to find the link in the description of this video. So please be sure to do it with me and follow my code line by line. We also need to create a machine learning model. We will go with random forest, which is uh, simple enough to use. And then the last part would be to actually employ Lime. So first thing is to get some libraries as a comment and the way that we need. So for Lime, you do need to install it first. So don't forget to do pip install Lime in your Anaconda prompt, for instance. And then the libraries that I want to import immediately would be import numpy as np, then import pandas as pd, and then the last one would then be import sklearn dot model underscore selection and then import train test split and i made a mistake over here so instead of import in the beginning uh, it should be from and here we go so for me it would be shift enter and then the next one as a comment get data set and the way that I have it, so I have mine on my uh, working directory, so that's easy enough uh, to get. So get dataset, we call it dataset equals, I'm going to use pandas dot read underscore CSV, and then open parentheses, open the quotation marks, and it's called Udemy underscore finance. And this is a dataset that crawled the Udemy website for all the finance related courses and the key idea and this is what we are going to do in this course is that we'll try to find characteristics and uh, that make it that the courses have a higher uh, rating and as a person who has Udemy courses myself this is of my own self-interest so it's very exciting for me to use machine learning for my own purpose and to my own use cases the thing that I want to do next is that I'll do data set and then dot add so I can have a brief look at my data set, shift enter, and then here we go. So the way that I have it here, we have, let me decrease the zoom a bit to 125. And so we have the ID, the title, the URL, this we don't need, is paid, definitely seems like a good variable number of subscribers, then we have average rating, average rating recent, and then the rating, and then we have the number of reviews also seems good, is wishlisted, does not seem like it fulfills a purpose, because I want things that are within the control of the instructor or within my control, for instance, and wishlisted, this is something that is within the student control, or it is not as something that I can act upon. Number of published lectures within my control, number of published practice tests as well. And then we have created. This is something that for me is not of interest because for me it will be more interesting to have the last updated. And this is just when it was created. So imagine if it was updated in 2020, the information is simply not here. And then we have the discounts of the prices and everything and again this is something i don't see a connection uh, with the rating especially since everything is bought usually at the discount at udemy so i don't find it that relevant but of course when you do this feel free to add for instance the discount price amount or the price detail amount which are ready to use and should be quite simple so the next step is that in our one of our variables so is paid. This is currently a Boolean and I need to transform it into an integer. So transform Boolean into integer. And the way that it works is that we go to our data set and then we get 
our is underscore paid do equals and then we do data set and then open the square brackets again is underscore paid and then we just do s type open parenthesis open quotation marks and then we do int or rather at no quotation marks and just int so again shift enter and let's go to the next step which is to isolate my x and my y isolate x and y and this is nothing but to select the variables that i want to use so for my y this is quite simple we go to my data set and if i go above there are currently three so average rating rating and average rating uh, recent and you can see that average rating recent and rating is more or less the same i'm going to go for the rating which is the same as the recent because i think this is more relevant so the rating in which they currently have and as it goes so in quotation marks i just write rating and then i go to my x so capital x and then equals to again data set now because we are setting more than one we do double square brackets and then the first one will be the is paid because it's the one that we have already used and then comma next one num of subscribers and then the next one would then be the number of reviews again num and then underscore reviews then comma and then num of publish lectures and here we go and then the last one that i will use will be the number of published and then i want to have practice uh, tests and here we go quite quite simple and let's go through it so shift enter and this is actually it if i am to for instance just run on my x just to make sure that it actually works so i were to do x and then underscore head here you go and we have the is paid number of subscribers number of reviews number of published lectures and then the number of published practice tests so just to make sure that we have everything that we want and then the next step is to split into train and then test and how to do this so x train comma x test comma and then y train and then the last one will be y test so we'll create this for objects equal and then we use the function that we have imported which is the train underscore test underscore split comma and then we just said okay so it's our x it is our y and then i want my test size to be equals to 0 0.2 which means that 80 percent of the observations will be in my train set and then the last one is random state just so that you have similar results to me 1502 as that is my date of birth again shift enter let's continue to the next step and now that all my data is prepared and everything is set it's time for random forest we need to import a particular function so from sklearn dot ensemble i want to import my random forest regressor there we go and then we'll call it model model equals and then i use my function so random forest and then regressor and the way that i need to do now is so random state again so we have similar results to me equals 1502 and then the last one number of estimators let's use 200 and then the last step would be to then fit this model to my x and my y train so dot fit and then x train and then comma my x or rather yet my y train here we go shift enter next step now yes we can definitely now use lime so as a common lime so let's start the preparation so first we'll create this kind of lime model so this explainer and then the next step is to 
try to explain some instances that we can just select randomly. So first thing is from Lime, we need to import Lime underscore tabular. We'll call it something explainer. So this will be our model that explains. We'll go to our Lime underscore tabular, and then we do dot Lime tabular explainer, open parenthesis, and here we start. So training data, this is something that we definitely needs. So training data equals to NumPy array, and then we do x train. Everything has to be in its NumPy form. Next, after the training data, so which one is the mode? So mode equals, and then in quotes, regression. Next step would then be, so feature names, to then give a name to the array, so or to the variables that are within my array. Underscore names, and then equals to, I go to my x, underscore train, and then I do dot columns. Here we go, comma, and then the last one is that I also need to specify my categorical features. And for me, I just have one, and I just need to name the index, which is zero, because as you recall, if I go up here, then my x, my first one is, is paid, and in Python, index starts at zero. Let's do shift enter, and then what is left for us. So we call this one x, so for an instance, so I go to my explainer that I just created, and I do explain underscore instance, then open parenthesis, so data underscore row, I'm just going to do x and then x underscore test, and then dot I lock, then I just name, okay, let's do the, you know, fourth one, or you know, the fifth, according to the index, comma, and then I need to do predict underscore fn, and then I used to go to my model, so the random forest model that I created, and then I do predict, and this is about it. Then the next step is that I go to my exp, so my exp, and then show in notebook, and this is why it's very important that you need to use, uh, for instance, Jupyter Notebook, because for instance, in Spider, this would not work, and then show underscore table equals to true. Here you go, let's do shift enter. And then the last thing here while this runs is then that I do exp and then I do as underscore list. And then I would just open the parenthesis. And again, I now I do control enter. And for instance, so for this particular one, the predicted value is 4.5. And here we can see the five factors and whether they are having a negative impact or a positive one. And for instance, number of published lectures is currently having a negative impact and as well the number of subscribers. And in here we can see the list. So because the number of published lectures is less or equal than 12, it has a negative impact. So students expect a higher number of published lectures. When it comes to reviews, it is having a positive impact. So this middle way of between 24 and 37, this one has a positive impact. Number of published practice tests, it's zero. And this one also has a positive impact. So apparently, if there are practice tests, then usually students don't like it or they don't rate the courses as high. Then you have is paid equals zero. Apparently, this is having as well a positive impact, at least in this case. And then the last one would then be that the number of subscribers, which is between 500 and 2000, this one has a negative impact. But let's just do for our last one. Let's choose, for instance, you know, 10 or you know 11 again. Shift enter, control enter, and let's 
wait a bit and it will appear. And this one has a very tiny amount of review, so less than seven. Again, very negative impact. So apparently if you have at least a middle size of reviews, it's good. Number of subscribers, it is tiny, so that should have had a positive impact. Number of published lectures, middle amount, so it's also doing good. And then is paid, so this one equals one. Now this one has a positive impact, and it's very important to understand that it really depends on the instance and where it is located. So for instance, if it has a lot of reviews, then that influence the impact of the other variables. So this non uh, linearity or overall the segmentation of the impact per the situation of each instance. This is super critical and it's something that honestly I really enjoy. And then the last step would then be publish of practice tests, which is uh, currently at zero and having a slight negative impact. So this is something that you can definitely play. Uh, if you have a Udemy course like me, you can also play around to see where your course is faring. And if you try to increase the subscribers or you really try to push more published lectures or you know increase the practice tests where you would land. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. And as well, don't forget to check my courses on Udemy, which you'll find the link down below. I am very much looking forward to seeing you in another video. Until then, have fun. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.